Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lessons, we discussed force, and we said force is a push or a pull on an object. Then we moved down and discussed two types of forces. That is gravitational force, which is a force of attraction between two bodies at a distance. And we said gravitational force is the force which makes bodies to move towards the ground. Then we also discussed centripetal force and we said centripetal force is a force that maintains a body to move in a circular motion. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss two more other forces, that is magnetic force and uptrust force. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to fully describe magnetic force in terms of attraction and repulsion and then define uptrust force and state some of the effects of uptrust force and then we are going to determine the how to calculate or how to find uptrust force that is you take the weight of a body in air, then you subtract the weight of a body in a fluid. Then in that case, you could have calculated a uh, uptrust force. We are going to see that. And then finally, give few applications. Applications of uptrust force. Magnetic force is the force of attraction or repulsion due to a magnet. So, for you to have attraction or repulsion, then there must be a magnet. And we are going to discuss magnetism, the first topic in Form 2. We are going to discuss more about it. But a magnet basically has two poles, North Pole and South Pole. On the, ball, on the screen, North Pole is written as N, South Pole is written as S. So when does attraction take place? Attraction takes place when two opposite poles, that is North Pole and South Pole, are brought close to each other. And when they are brought close to each other, they attract or they pull each other. Remember we defined force as a pull. So if there's a pull between two magnets then they will generate what we call a magnetic force now repulsion takes place when there is two like poles close to each other like on the screen you can see north pole close to north pole in this case since the poles are similar they will repel repelling means they will push each other away so in this case they will push now, this has completed our definition of a force. Force is a pull or a push when two bodies interact. So, when you bring two similar poles, like North Pole and North Pole, they will push each other away or they will repel. And when you bring South Pole and South Pole, they will also repel. But if you bring North Pole and South Pole, they will attract. Another important thing to note here is that force is a non-contact force remember we also said uh, gravitational force gravitational force is also a non-contact force non-contact force means these are forces which act when two bodies are not in contact so magnets don't have to touch each other for them to attract or repel so magnetic attraction or attraction can also take place between a magnet and a magnetic material we are going to define a magnetic material as a material which can be attracted by a magnet because we have other materials which cannot be attracted by a magnet but that is later when we reach in form two now just as we have said attraction takes place when we have two unlike poles or two 
opposite poles close to each other. So in this case, attraction will take place. Attract. Then if you have also a magnet that is North Pole and South Pole, and then you have a magnetic material just like iron, this magnet will attract this magnetic material or this ion. So what does that mean? Around a magnet, when we have a magnet like this, North Pole and South Pole, there is a place around this magnet where we have magnetic influence and we are going to call it a magnetic field. Magnetic field. So if you bring any magnetic material close to the poles or close to this area where we have magnetic field, uh, it will be attracted or it will be uh, pulled close to the magnet. Also, repansion, just as we have said, it takes place between two like poles. Repansion takes place between two like poles. For example, if you have North Pole, South Pole, and then you have another magnet, South Pole, North Pole, in this case, they will repel. And then if you have also two magnets and you have North Pole and North Pole close to each other, in this case also, they will repel. They will repel each other. Now this one has led us to the second type of force in this lesson, that is uptrust force. Uptrust force is an upward, upward force acting on an object immersed or placed or dipped in a fluid. A fluid, in this case, we are going to define a fluid as a substance. A substance that can flow. A substance that, that can flow. So, we are going to discuss fluids, a whole topic in Form 2. There's last topic of form 2 called fluid flow so we are going to see how fluids flow and their effects so substances that can flow among the three states of matter remember in physics we said we are only going to focus on the three states of matter that is liquid solids and gases solids cannot flow liquids like water can flow and then gases can also uh, flow so we are going to discuss up trust in liquids and the gases so Whenever you have a liquid or a gas, and then you subject an object inside these uh, fluids, they will receive an upward force. So upward force can be easily demonstrated using a very simple uh, setup. You take a balloon and then you inflate it, and then you bring it inside a container having water. Then you take that balloon you dip it or you push it into the water this is your balloon that you have inflated so this is a balloon then this is water so you will be pushing this balloon downwards you push the balloon downwards the moment you release the balloon the moment you remove your force or you remove your fingers from the balloon after it has uh, placed the water downwards, the balloon now will receive an upward force into the surface of the water. So the force which pushes the balloon upwards after you have removed your hands is the one that we call uptrust force. And this uptrust force is the one behind uh, ships and boats floating on top of water, like you can see. In this diagram down there. So it is uptrust force which makes bodies to float on water, all on liquids, all on fluids in general. So another thing to note is that uptrust force is a contact force. Contact force means it's a, a force which can only take place when the two bodies involved are touching each other or are in contact. Like in this case, in our diagram here, the one that I've drawn. 
the balloon must be in contact with the water for it to receive an upward force without the balloon being in contact with the water it will not receive any upward force another uh, case is for the boat down here the one that you can see on the screen for the boat to receive uh, an upward force so that it can float on water it must be in contact the boat and the water must be in contact for up thrust to take place so up thrust can also be defined as the apparent apparent loss in weight of a body mass in a fluid or in liquids or gases and you can demonstrate this by using a very simple experiment where you are going to have um, a cramp and stand if you have your stand here and then you have your cramp fixed at this point and now you have your meter roll you will fix a meter roll there with its scale reading from zero and then moving down to 100 down there and then now you will take a spring take a spring tight on the cramp and then tie a mass on it tie some mass on it here this is the mass let's say it is 50 newtons so in this case this spring has a pointer you will read the reading on the scale let's say you read something like in this case you have read something like 40 centimeters and now what you do for us to test up thrust you will take the same setup then you introduce a, a beaker containing water so let me redraw another one here so that you see what i'm talking about if you have your same cramp same setup like the one you had so i'm not going to draw exactly the one that i've drawn there because i'm not good at copying our drawings then you introduce your meter rule like that it has a scale with zero at the top that's a scale there then now here we will have a beaker containing water a beaker containing water at that level and then what you do now you introduce the same the same setup the way it is the same body and now you introduce it here like that now you read the pointer at this mark what the pointer will be reading what you will realize is that in this case the pointer will be reading a scale less than it was reading previously like in this case if it was reading 40 it might change from 40 and become less like 30 centimeters so what does this mean it means the fluid or the liquid which in this case we have used uh, water has pushed the scale upwards it means it has made the body lighter or less weight so now if we measure if we use a spring balance and measure the weight inside this water it will be less than when it's in air in 50 newtons let's say for example it measures 40 newtons and now if we want to know the force which pushed this uh, body upwards in water then now which we call up thrust in this case which we will call up thrust it will be a weight in air the weight in air when there is no fluid uh, like water which is pushing it up minus weight in water therefore now if we take up our up thrust will be up thrust will be 50 newtons minus 40 newtons which will give us 10 newtons so the 10 newtons is the one which has pushed the body upward so that it has reduced uh, the scale from 40 to 30 so the force which made the body to be light or less weight is 10 newtons and this force is caused by this 
fluid in this case we have used uh, water so we are going to see a few examples where we are going to calculate uh, upthrust force in different fluids and you should know different liquids have different um, upthrust force it will depend on the density of the liquid if the density is more or if the liquid is more dense it will have more upthrust and if it's less dense it will have low uptrust. now we have examples of situations in which uptrust force acts the first one is balloons rising i remember we used to blow balloons during christmas so they were rising up the moment you inflate it and release it it will be flying up so the reason why that balloon flies up is because of air which is a fluid which pushes it upwards another case or situation where uptrust force acts is swimmers you see someone floating on top of water or in a swimming pool or in an ocean or even boats floating on water the only reason why they float is, is because there's a force from the water which is uh, pushing them upwards and that force is uptrust force. Then we have another one, bodies immersed in liquids weighs less than when it, they are in air. They're like the example that we have done a few seconds ago, if you immerse a body in a fluid, then you measure its weight, it will weigh less than when you weigh it in air. So let's do one example on how to calculate uptrust so that you see exactly what we are talking about and you will find more questions on eclm website that the link is down there where you are going to handle more and more questions on uptrust force the question reads a body weighs 240 a body weighs 240 in air so in air it weighs 240 newtons then 190 when submerged in water when it's inside water it will weigh 100 it will weigh 190 newtons when submerged in water calculate the uptrust acting on the body so the first thing a student should do is you first write the scientific principle behind this one the scientific principle in this case we mean a formula so you will say uptrust is equals to weight in air minus weight in water now which will give us up trust is equals to weight in air is 240 newtons then weight in uh, water is 190 newtons now our up trust force is going to be 240 minus 90 which is going to be 50 uh, newtons and in that case you have, would have calculated the force which pushed this body upwards from water now students we have discussed two types of forces that is magnetic force and we have seen how attraction takes place and repulsion takes place then we have also discussed uptrust force and we have seen how it makes bodies to feel or to appear less weight than they actually are and we have seen how to calculate uptrust where you are going to take a weight in air you subtract the weight in a fluid then now that will mark the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss a uh, frictional force then nuclear force and then finally we'll look at mass and weight and then at the end we'll talk about vectors and scalars and that will mark the end of our topic force so stay tuned and welcome to easy learning as simplified